What is up everybody? Today we are going to be creating this. It is a navigation that's sticky, but only on scroll up. Very fun and awesome stuff. All right, so the purpose of this idea is that when if you have a, a site like a blog, for instance, that has potentially articles that are very lengthy, um, when somebody's at the bottom and they start to scroll up, this will reveal that navigation. That way it doesn't neg it negates them having to scroll all the way up. So the inspiration for today's video actually came from a person named Chris Miller on Twitter. And they did one of those fancy Twitter threads right here. And so what I did is I hit this person up and I asked Chris if I could use this. And he said, holy sh the Gary Simon. Yes, it is the Gary Simon. So he gave me permission to use this. Um, and yeah, it's just fairly straightforward. There's a code pen um, in the document or in the YouTube description. And let's go ahead and get ready to rock. Now, wait one second. We're about to get our hands dirty with some JavaScript, which is front end development stuff. Now, if you're not very good with front end development like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, then you should definitely check out the front end developer career path at scrimba.com. At scrimba, you don't just watch videos. No, no, no. You're actually able to modify code in the browser while you learn. My course on UI design features over 100 lessons that are specifically tailored to help you become an awesome UI designer, and they're packed with interactive challenges. So I really can't stress this enough. Definitely consider joining at Scrimba. If you click the top link here in the YouTube description, you're going to get access to the front end developer career path, which has so many amazing courses, and it's going to help you really level up your front end development game. All right, let's get to it. So by default, I've already created the HTML, the CSS, which we'll take a look at in a second. Um, but this is what the project looks like without the sticky nav and without, you know, what the purpose of this tutorial is. As you can see, it just stays right up. Now, if this was a really long, lengthy article or something, which in its current form, it's not. Let's, let's assume it is. Um, it does make sense to uh, make this drop down and give a quick, a quick way uh, upon scrolling up to access this navigation. All right, so let's look at the HTML. Again, nothing really crazy is happening. We have all the header stuff right here. Um, and then we have just some other stuff. This is all completely random. Don't have to worry about that. But um, for this to work, we just need to know, uh, we need to put position fixed on the header element, which we don't currently have. So here's all the CSS and SAS form. Um, you could take a look at this in the code pen. Uh, fairly straightforward, really doesn't have anything pertinent to do yet with this tutorial. So let's go to um, header, and this is what we want to do. We want to put in position fixed. All right, so we're going to save that. And if we go back to the project, you'll see now <laughs> this sort of strange situation that's occurring. Now, I the reason it's kind of not at the top is because we need to specify top zero, left zero. And if we save that, we'll now see it's in the correct position, but now it's always visible. So when you're scrolling down though, you don't necessarily need to see this um, when you're scrolling down because your intention is just to access more of the content and not necessarily the navigation. But when you scroll up, uh, we're gonna try to keep this in view though. All right, so w one thing we also wanna do is, is specify the Z index and just put it at something really high, uh, just because we wanted to make sure, depending on whatever might what might be in the actual, like for instance, the article content, if there's anything else that's position fixed uh, or, or position absolute, it'll be on top of it, because uh, you don't want anything on top of your navigation. Um, and then also finally, the, the last rule set that we'll add is a transition just to create an animation between different states that occur based on the classes that are added in the JavaScript. So transition. Uh, we'll just do all 300 milliseconds, ease in, out. All right, so this line right now obviously won't have any effect because we're not changing anything. So now we're going to come down here and we'll just do some JavaScript in our HTML at the bottom. And there's a couple things that we need to declare first. So we're going to get the body. So we're going to say const body equals the document. If I can type <laughs> body, I just woke up by the way. Uh, let's hit control plus, get that a little bit larger. And then also we're going to create a variable last scroll equals zero. So this we're, we're going to get, uh, we want to store the last scroll position so we can compare it to the current scroll position to determine whether or not we're scrolling up or down. And then in, 
in doing that, we'll, we'll know which classes to remove or add. All right, so now we're gonna do a window dot add event listener and we're gonna listen for scroll. All right, and then inside of here, we're gonna open this up. And now we're going to get the page Y offset uh, property um, off the window. So what that means is uh, every time you scroll down, uh, either through your mouse scroll wheel or uh, dragging the scroll bar, um, it will know, it will provide us with that value in terms of pixels, how, how, how many pixels have gone down. So let's just show you real quick what that is. So um, we'll do a console log of window dot uh, page y offset. So every time that there's a scroll occurring, it's going to console log and return us with this particular value. So let's hit control shift I and there we go. As you can see, it's rapid. So if I refresh, we'll start going down and down. So based on how far this uh, distance is, we're at 400 pixels. So it's not necessarily from the top of this, this scroll bar, but it's based on the layout, uh, how far we've scrolled down. And so obviously we go all the way back up to zero, and there we go. All right, so now what we'll do is we're gonna store this, and let's get rid of that, and this, in a variable uh, called uh, const current scroll. All right. So now inside of here, uh, I guess we'll say at the very bottom we're gonna put last scroll, which was defined above. And we're gonna make that equal current scroll. All right, so now what we'll say is, uh, and this is important that we define this at the bottom because this is what the last scroll value uh, is. And then every time it restarts, it'll know, um, it'll be able to compare the two values. So now what we'll do is we're gonna say if the current scroll uh, is less than or equal to zero, meaning it's at the top, then what we'll do is we're gonna do a body.class list and we're going to remove a CSS property that we haven't yet defined, uh, our CSS class called scroll up. All right. So if I save this, um, we're going to define two classes in CSS called scroll up and scroll down. All right, so I'm going to come all the way down here, and let's just put in a comment here, scroll stuff, <laughs> and then oh, I hate when it does that. You end a comment, and for some reason, it adds that at root thing. Anyhow, what we'll do now is we're going to say scroll down header, and we're going to transform translate 3d and we're going to specify three values zero negative 100 percent so first is x we don't want to change the horizontal position obviously um, but this is going to be on the y value uh, so we're going to hide it all right and then we're going to put zero and then we're going to have a scroll up header and this is going to be transform oh wait no it's not <laughs> What am I doing? This one is actually kind of interesting. Um, we're gonna leave this off for now. I'm not even gonna put anything inside of it. Um, so really it renders this particular code useless, but you're gonna see how this comes into play in a second uh, because we're gonna do something on the scroll up uh, as you'll see soon. Um, so now what we wanna do is detect um, and we wanna compare those two values of current scroll and last scroll and we, if, if we're scrolling down, then we wanna do something. If we're scrolling up, we wanna do something. So what we'll say is if the current scroll is greater than the last scroll. All right, so what that means is when we start scrolling, this is the value that's responsible for that. So let's say for instance, if it's zero, uh, and then the last scroll is defined way down here at the bottom. Now, of course, remember this is rapidly firing and it's evaluating this code very quickly. Um, and what this is going to mean is, I uh, well, let's let's real quickly add another uh, parameter here um, or a condition for this this if value. It's going. To, we're also going to put if, and we're going to put the exclamation point to say uh, not essentially. If the body class list 
contains, or rather doesn't contain, scroll down, then we want to body.classList, we want to remove scroll up, and then also add scroll down. Or remove, yep, yeah. all right, scroll down. And all right, so if we come down here, um, let's experiment. Let's see what happens here. Obviously, you can see it completely went away. Um, Control Shift I and go to our elements. You can see currently, although I might be on top of it. Let me see where I'm at. Okay, let me move this out so that we can see what's happening here. All right, so I'm not sure if you can see it's kind of small down here. I'll, I'll boost things up. You can see it says class is I uh, scroll down. All right, so if I refresh, now if I scroll down, there it goes. It just added the class of scroll down, and scroll down, if you remember, is hiding it. So that's what's responsible for this this code right here. Um, that that's what's achieving that. So we're adding scroll down and removing the class of scroll up, which remember right now is nothing. Um, so. Now what we want to do is when we're we're kind of going to reverse this, we're going to add scroll up, but remove scroll down. Uh, but we get, we're not going to just put an else statement because there's also another condition here. So what we can do is just copy this. We're going to say if it's greater than, and oops, less than rather, and then we are going to remove this. And for this one, this is going to be the same thing, except if it does exist. So if it's already containing scroll down, then we want to remove scroll down. In this case, we'll change this and then add scroll up. So you're probably wondering what the purpose is of scroll up. So if we uh, scroll down, there we go. And if we scroll up, there it goes. It lets us know that we're scrolling up. Now, nothing changes except for adding an empty class. So just so we can quickly visualize this, we could do, let's see, border, bottom, uh, five pixels solid, black. All right, so if I come up, that's what it's essentially doing. Now, what we're going to do, um, and what the individual who created this tutorial decided to do, um, is basically, and this isn't a necessity, it, it kind of depends on the needs of your site, we're gonna add a kind of like a, a, a shadow, a little bit of a drop shadow to separate the navigation from the rest of the content, uh, because depending on your content, you might have another white area, um, and then your navigation might get lost a little bit. So this will create a visual separation um, by doing this. So we could just add, let me see the reference code real quick, a filter, drop shadow, and zero, negative 10 pixels, 20 pixels, RGB, 170, and this is just like a, a gray, I believe. Yep, and then we'll save it and start scrolling up. And now you can see a very subtle shadow. If I boost the size here a little bit, that separates everything. Now, once we go to zero, it hides. Come down, the navigation is hidden, scroll up, and that nice transition creates that little animation. And now if a person's down here at the bottom, they're like, oh, I'm gonna scroll up, oh, I wanna, there it is, like the navigation's there, I don't have to scroll up already. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that, you learned a lot. I Like I said, the code pen is in the uh, YouTube description. Definitely check out Chris Miller. I, I have also linked his information as well because he's the person who inspired this video tutorial. And make sure also to check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet, enter your email because the, I, my service is gonna be launching here within several months. I will see you all soon, goodbye. <laughs>